Would a phone ban for kids do more harm than good? Do give us a call on this, 0207 862 2222, and we'll speak to you in just a moment. There's pressure on the government to introduce tougher regulations on social media platforms, and now ministers are considering actually banning the sale of smartphones for under 16s. But Ian Russell, this is the dad of Molly Russell, who took her own life after viewing large amounts of self-harm and suicide-related contact content on social media has said that this ban could do more harm than good. He says that overly intrusive parental controls could weaken the trust between children and parents and that the ban would punish children for the failures of technology companies to build products responsibly and children have told us that being online is fundamental to their lives fundamental to a child's lives. Is that not the problem, That Lizzie? is the problem. That is the problem because they're so addictive. And um, I, I totally stopped my boys from having them under 16. Um, look, I'm afraid smartphones expose them to a lot of things they shouldn't see as, as children. Um, there's, there's trolling, there's, uh, you know, self-harm things that are on there, many things that are quite disturbing that I don't think a child should see. Violence, pornography. There's violence, there's all of that storm. And also it has a detrimental effect on the brain. Mm. That has been scientifically proven. Uh, the, the, the blue light there keeps them awake. Um, there, there's mental health problems. It stops them going out. And, you know, they're not as social. How many times have we seen children around a dinner table and they're just not even looking up from their phone? It stops them being social. And I think it, it has a real mental detrimental effect. And it, it's worrying. And I, I, I really don't believe in banning things but I do believe in this. And I think for the safety of our, our kids, we need to. When you look at the stats, Marvin, so this is a programme for international student assessment. It says that students that spend less than an hour online per day versus children that are glued to screens five times a day. I mean, the children that aren't on the screens as much way outperform those mm -hmm. that are. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just evidence sitting there that says this isn't good for our children's minds? I almost feel like this conversation is like 15 years too late. Like we've been, I, I even I, I had a smartphone growing up, so and I'm a very much an adult. So I, I feel like this conversation is too late to start. It sounds like a vanity policy just to kind of appease maybe the older generation and say that young people are bad. 100% is an issue, but I never understand why we never talk about the actual conditions in which these children have these phones in. And yes, you 100% should look at things like so uh, the platform, social media platforms, raising the age from 13 to 16 to have an independent account. That makes perfect sense. I have no idea why a 13-year-old would need a social media account. But actually, the climate and the condition for bullying, for violence, for all of depression comes in terms of how the country is run. The dialogue which happens at government level to the rest of the world reverberates amongst everybody else. You think the bullying happens in an isolation chamber of young people who have a phone. It's like, no, we all talk to each other in incredibly harmful ways. We all interact with each other in a very lack of caring way. That's what creates the conditions for these young people to bully and to, to create these kind of culture where actually there's a lot of stresses. These individual big cases, like I, I celebrate this dad for having optimism mm. in his life, despite what has gone on for himself personally. It's incredible to have that opinion, but the actual solution is teaching children to be able to engage with their phones in a healthy way. How long should you be on it? What apps you should be on? What you should be visiting? And parents having a relationship with their children to intervene if something goes wrong. So it's like modernising our perspective on parenting is fundamental to being able to look after young people Actually, maybe, while they have phones. Marvin, you might have a point here. Maybe it is the parents' fault. After all, we're all guilty of sitting looking at our phones and our children are looking at us. We so we're it. teaching it's them how to really. behave with and them. And as I said, that's the problem. It's addictive. Look, even my own boys tell me off when the other night I was having dinner with them, I was looking at my, mm. you know, Instagram. And they're like, Mum, we're talking to you. And it's so it is you, addictive. <laughs> yes, ban me you from, from it. You're not allowed to ban me from Instagram. But look, that's the problem. It's actually at, with kids growing their brain, it is actually. I mean, look at all the science of it. It actually is damaging to their brains and their growth and their um, emotional and how they socialise. Too many kids are too happy just to sit at home looking at their phones. And yes, the parents have to say no. But I think if there's a ban, then, you know, it's out of their hands. They, I, they, I, and I, I, I don't you. agree with banning things, but this I do. I do hear because, your point. Yeah, because it has a, the devices have an actual effect and on I, a child's brain. The frontal cortex of your brain isn't fully developed till you're 25. But then if you look at what this dad is saying, 
and, and what Marvin is saying, maybe if we merge these two things together, because what they're saying is that this isn't the children's fault. This is the fault of the technology makers. These things are made to be addictive. Social yeah. media is made to be addictive. So maybe we need to get tough on them I for totally producing such addictive that. products rather than punishing children and taking um, technology away from them, which is actually... Isn't that the future? Don't they have to it learn how to use it technology? It isn't punishing. It isn't punishing. They can, they can learn, be, have social skills, do sports, so many different mm. things without your smartphones. I, I mean, is that what we say? We can't live without it. That's the problem. And I, it gets addictive. No, and I, it isn't I, good for their brain. Let them develop emotionally things. and mentally. They need to develop without a smartphone. I feel like all advancements in technology have always been questioned of like the most abused version of that technology. Mm -hmm. We never look at how do we responsibly introduce these things into society. They just happen. And then 20 years later, we're going to try and have a conversation of clawing back the internet when actually most adults, so, you know, I'm now 40, <laughs> and um, I've lived with the internet for pretty much over half my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm a part of the problem too. We was raised on how to connect to each other on the internet. Also, there are people who ha actually make money online, have digital economies online, have digital communities online. We're talking you about pull, children. No, but even children, so their, their connection and their, their being rela having relationships with their friends is staying connected to them through their devices. Yeah, but you're so it's about a nation of hermits that are sitting at home just that, looking at their but, phone. But, but the and idea that to... taking phones means that everyone's going to go outside and play with some sort of like Victorian toy. It's and, not Victorian. And be back outside. I'm just saying it's That's far healthier doing sport and it's far healthier than building just staring dens. At... What happened to building People dens? Love... Kids don't do that I anymore. Like building a den. When, when I was 19, what? the things that were going on outside, I prefer my child to be inside on a device than I do being outside, running around, creating fires, jumping off buildings, like, affect, smashing glass skills. windows. That's yeah, what young people were doing at 13. And their social skills. Just going, they don't need to look at a phone. Just going back to, to what benefit. Ian Russell has said here, and he has experience, and you know we have to to, to listen to his view on this, but he says that actually bringing in this ban can disrupt the trust between parents and children because it's, yeah. it, it's too strict. But actually, isn't it much more helpful that a government sets in a ban so that, I mean, what can the parents it's do? It is, from the government. It's illegal for them to give their child the phone. So maybe that would help the relationship. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't want the government that messed up like COVID protection to turn around and tell me how to raise my children with all due respect. I, I have built a relationship with my children to understand what's happening in their life. And it's my job to maintain that relationship to be able to coach them through but those sadly, things. there are too many bands sad in from suicides above my head that are going on in children because of smartphones okay. and the trolling. Okay. Let's go to the phones. Jade from Staffordshire. The irony that we're going to phones, I don't know whether you're on a mobile, Jade, but what's your thoughts on banning them for under-16s? Um, I, can't, I can't quite decide if they should be banned or not, but we've got a 12-year-old and he's almost 12 and he was grounded. So one of the things that we grounded him with was taking his mobile phone off him. Okay. And since then, it's been for a whole month and we've had so many good effects since he hasn't been on his phone. He's been socialising, he's been sleeping better, he's not tired. And he's even said to, to us that um, he doesn't really want it back, he doesn't want his PlayStation back. Well, that is quite amazing, Jade. Can I ask mm. what you grounded him for? Uh, it may be <laughs> private. I'm just wondering whether it was something to do with the phone. Was it anything to do with the no. phone? It wasn't no, anything was to do with the phone. ball and hit next door's car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all been there, Jade. Uh, okay, understandable then. So what's the, what's going to be the outcome here? Do you think you're going to give the phone back and maybe uh, put stricter rules on how much he uses yeah. it? Or Yeah, definitely. Um, he's, he said to me and his, his stepdad, um, he asked if we could not give him his PlayStation back. Um, so I said, well, we'll keep that if he wanted it in the future when he's a bit older. But with, with his phone, um, I think he... He sort of needs a phone because he's in high school. And I think in this day and age, it, it, it's he... just evolved that way. Dave, um, you didn't have a phone in high school, did you? No, no. I, I had one when I was about 15, but it was one of those flip ones. I had no internet or anything. Yeah. And you oh, still managed to get to school and back from school. So does yeah. he need one? I think it's more pressure for, for me, to be honest. Oh. I personally don't think he needs one, but his family on, on his a uh, paternal side, they were hounding me for ages. They were saying, oh, um, he needs a phone now. I thought you'd have had a phone by now. 
Well, I suppose don't in, do family be a pressure. I suppose in terms of the family being able to contact him and him having um, communication quite regularly with his family, it's quite nice maybe to have a phone and you can send text yeah. messages. I, I do wonder though, when Ian Russell is saying that it's pressure on parents, or sorry, when Ian Russell is saying that it could stop the trust between children and parents, actually what you're describing to me is it's pressure on the parents to get them a phone that the government could take off yeah. their hands. I, Definitely. Marvin might be right though, the horse is bolted in this scenario and we just have to learn ways of, of dealing with the problem as it is at the moment. Yeah, sort of managing and limiting what did go on because I do believe in things that recently have happened um, to um, to a, a girl. Mm-hmm. I think definitely parents need to have such such yeah. a bigger impact on what the children are searching for on do the you, internet. I, I, I hear you on that one for sure. Thank you very much for your call. Big problem now if you want yeah. to punish your son though you've already got his phone and his, his PlayStation. <laughs> How are you going to do it? <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to move.